Hi, this is Mark Patterson, University Ombuds for Cal State University, Channel Islands, here for another edition of Channel Our Potential, a series where we ask the question, what does it mean to you to channel our potential at Channel Islands? So our next guest will be Peter Musinskis, who works in IT services as the director of IT strategy. Peter's been with Channel Islands since 2003, came here from uh, Loyola Mar Marymount University in Los Angeles, where he also received his undergraduate degree in music. Uh, he's uh, this month completed his master's in education uh, from Cal State University Fullerton. So I uh, look forward to hearing from Peter and how he helps connect and help people solve problems across campus. So Peter, you know, I was looking at a next guest for this series and was pondering, you know, how do I find folks who help connect and, and increase collaboration on campus and the, you know the strangest coincidence up pops this invite to participate in the you know the digital communications collaborative which seemed to me to be the perfect example peter can you kind of start us off and give us a little bit of background of, of how this particular initiative got started and what your goals were for it yeah. yes the digital communication collaborative sprung out of conversations that we were having recently around the tremendous transformation that we're going through uh, with regards to uh, response to COVID-19. So the, the idea behind the Digital Communication Collaborative was really to get people together that are working with websites and with social media to have a very grassroots conversation around how we can best support one another with regards to how we communicate being able to get a, a large group of people together. And it's amazing that the, the technology makes that relatively easy to do. I like how you mentioned this is sort of a grassroots approach because certainly in times of uncertainty, like you mentioned was a bit of a prompt. There is sometimes a tendency in organizations to want to take a top-down approach to say, we've got to manage it. We've got to control the situation. So there's a certain amount of uh, vulnerability. Uh, I think people that are doing the, the work and are really the boots on the ground that are responsible for making so many things at, at Channel Islands happen. Uh, it's, it's so incredibly important to have those people engaged. And if the barrier is uh, awareness or knowledge, sometimes it's just a matter of getting people together uh, uh, through something like the Digital Communication Collaborative or another group uh, to, to enable people to share. So much of what we build at Channel Islands comes from the work of the people uh, that really serve as the foundation of the campus. The, the, so many of the staff and faculty that are really creating this place every day and recreating it. And so uh, giving them the, the tools that they need, helping them to develop the skills that uh, they need is only going to make Channel Islands a, a stronger place and a better place. Yeah, and I, I like too the idea that you are able to recognize that knowledge resides horizontally or across the organization in so many ways. And, and then sometimes we have barriers that make it hard for that knowledge to, to disseminate. And, and, and speaking of barriers, I think I want to maybe take a moment to address sort of the elephant in the room in the sense that you know, both of us here, we're, we're white men of, of privilege and education. Uh, in a time where this is really uh, difficult for our country and, and our university. Um, how does that inform your thinking, you know, where you come from as somebody who shows up as, as a white man in an environment uh, where others may not feel they've had that opportunity to share knowledge? Does that play into your thinking? It, absolutely, it does. It's a critical aspect of making sure that everyone has a voice and that uh, the voices of people are, are heard. I think being in a position of, of privilege or, and responsibility, uh, there is a, a great amount of, of power that comes with that. As you, you know, the saying, great, great power comes great responsibility. And I think being in a, a position of authority and uh, where you are able to make decisions, uh, it's really important to reflect on how your own perceptions, how your own bias in many cases may be, um, may be playing out in terms of the decisions that are being made and really 
looking at yourself regularly and, and trying to, to reflect on what those, uh, what those biases may be. We all have blind spots. Uh, sometimes it's a matter of, of making sure that you're connecting with the right people that can help point those blind spots out to you. I, I'd say maybe the most important lesson is taking the time to listen and probably listening more than you actually speak. And then ultimately also making sure that we take some action to continue to create that kind of open uh, collegial atmosphere at Channel Islands, I think is incredibly important. That's a great roadmap, Peter. I like that you kind of, you mentioned three things that I think are really powerful. And that one, you're, you're talking about being aware of that, uh, noticing the power and privilege that does come to you in, a, in a hopefully a humble way. And then two, recognizing a certain amount of self-reflection regularly is important that our biases can when will affect us and then finally listening and creating safe spaces for listening i think that's a fantastic roadmap you know how did you get into that i've, I've been very very fortunate to have a few fantastic mentors uh in my um in my work life uh some some previous bosses that really helped me to understand some of the uh, some of the blind spots even that I had about myself, I think as leaders it also means that we have to take those same opportunities to help mentor others, to enable them to help see things in from different perspectives. So you have to be able to to have conversations, which means you have to be open and vulnerable to feedback. Uh, sometimes the feedback that you get isn't all, always positive, but if you have enough of an open mind and an open mindset, uh, that can really help implement change in your life and maybe help you personally or professionally get through some of those roadblocks. This is what I found in my own experience. I love how your interest in strategic level thinking and, and problem solving, you went to mentoring as what sort of sparked that for you. That in, in a sense, kind of comes back to the theme about channel our potential and helping connect problem solvers And that mentoring is such a powerful tool in doing that. And so you, again, you came at it sort of from a bottom up approach than a desire to gain power. Uh, it was a desire almost to pay it forward. That's, a, that's, a, that's a really neat way of looking at it. Where do you see Peter, the next kind of opportunities or, or maybe other opportunities for improving and enhancing connection and problem solving. I, I think there's opportunities at, at so many different levels. The levels that I'm thinking of, they range from everything from the most informal opportunities. So what kinds of spaces do you create to, uh, to have groups of people just get together and reconnect? What can you do to make the, the constraints that we have work in, in your advantage. We know that we're missing some of those hallway conversations that, that normally happen. Is there, is there something that, you, that we can do to, to use the tools that we have to still make some of those con informal conversations uh, happen on a, you know, uh, create opportunities for those conversations to happen? How do we create opportunities to connect with colleagues throughout our system? We're very fortunate to have a culture at our system level for information technology that's extremely supportive of collaboration between campuses. I think leveraging the larger CSU community is a, an incredibly rich uh, trove of, of information and knowledge that we have the opportunity to tap into if we simply go out and, and try to start making some of those connections. And in some cases, it ends up being that it's up to us to make those connections happen. Well, it's interesting that you have both an idea of being intentional about creating informal spaces to note that the hallway conversations don't happen as easily, at least in our current um, virtual workplace environment for so many people, uh, but also the opportunities are multiplied to stretch out. Somebody within the system just said, let's just do this, not waiting for it to be, again, come down from the top. But Our leadership realizes how important it is for Channel Islands to be able to connect well across the system. 
ultimately it also speaks to what Channel Islands really is and the power of, of all of us as an institution and is as well the power of us as individuals to think about what kinds of changes that uh, we want to try to make and then to actually act on those changes and to have leadership that creates sufficient space for us to be able to make those kinds of, of changes and participate at that level. Yeah, it, it is important to have a certain amount of willingness from leadership to allow risk taking and trying things that may not work and accept that and creating that space. You, ha you have to be deliberate about creating an environment where people can try those kind of connecting and collaborative activities that may not, not flow. So I always like to finish the, the interviews with sort of the concluding idea of what it means to channel our potential. So Peter, in a nutshell, what does it mean to you for us at Channel Islands to channel our potential? I think channeling our potential means three things. I think it means first and foremost, continuing to be open to new ideas and to being able to evaluate how things are and always thinking about how to improve things. I think the second part of uh, channeling our potential is making sure that we're always able to connect with whatever it is that makes Channel Island special and that, that we can really hold that in our hearts and our spirits and communicate that because that's really what this place is, is what we feel and what we communicate to the people that we're around about uh, what channel, what makes Channel Islands great. And I think the third piece of channeling our potential is uh, reflecting our commitment through our words and our actions for how we support one another through the difficult times that we're going through right now. Um, it takes uh, it takes effort, it takes commitment, and it takes courage to ensure that we create safe spaces, we raise our voices against injustices, and we support one another uh, as members of a very wide and diverse community. Sounds like you work in strategy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I, you so I have much. I've been known in, on occasion to work in strategy, yes. 